Good afternoon. 89,510. The predicted shortfall in Merchant Navy officers by 2026. The current shortfall is around 26,000. I begin with these numbers because people are at the heart of this presentation and they're at the heart of our organisation. Clyde Marine Training is a ship owner's, ship manager's training provider. This gives us a unique insight to both sides of the industry that we operate in, from the owner's perspective and the benefits of the tonnage tax scheme to the training provider's perspective and the benefits that we can deliver for the people in your organisation. Our group face the same challenges as any ship owner. We operate in a globally competitive market and we have the same challenges in recruiting and training the best people for our business. My name is Thomas Campbell. I've been with the group for just under 10 years and I'm speaking to you today from our auditorium in Glasgow. I started my career as a deck cadet with Clyde Marine Training before moving into the shoreside positions with Northern Marine. My focus there has mainly been crewing and training. Most recently, my positions have been owner's representative in the Philippines, where I spent a few years overseeing our operations around crewing, before returning to the UK as head of marine learning and development, which had the oversight of 300 cadets globally and 3,000 seafarers training compliance. I'm now the general manager of Clyde Marine Training. Clyde Marine Training is part of the wider Northern Marine Group, which itself is part of the wider Stena Group. Across all of these companies, people are at the heart of our organisation and are at the heart of our decision making.
Today we're here to cover the UK tonnage tax scheme and how this can benefit your company from both a financial perspective and with regards to providing high quality personnel for your fleet. The UK tonnage tax scheme is quite different to most in that it's not a tax deferral scheme. The intention is to provide a very real saving for participating businesses in terms of corporation tax. It does this by applying a corporation tax to a notional profit which is based on the total tonnage you have enrolled within the scheme. By paying tax in this manner, you, the ship owners, benefit from a lower predictable tax rate. The reason I say it's predictable is it is based on the tonnage that's within your fleet. HMRC, the UK's tax authority, have tried to keep this as simple as possible for enrolled companies. From a compliance and administrative perspective, it's matched to the corporation tax rules, which means your submission requirements remain consistent. Rules around the payment of the tax itself are also matched to the same corporation tax scheme, only at that lower rate. You must be conducting qualifying activities to enrol in the scheme. And let me get this right. That means that your vessels must be strategically and commercially managed in the UK. But this doesn't mean that it has to be a UK company. Foreign companies can enrol in the scheme provided that they are within the charge to corporation tax and your vessels don't need to be UK flagged. Many of our clients don't have UK flagged vessels. HMRC themselves have a pre-clearance procedure for this scheme. It's not mandatory, it's something that you can opt into, but it pathways through the enrolment into the scheme. It makes it very clear, very simple, and brings the company on board. In order to benefit from the preferential rates that the tonnage tax scheme offers, you must commit to training a certain number of cadets or ratings each year. This number, known as the CTC, the core training commitment, is calculated by taking the number of vessels in your fleet and the number of crew assigned to those vessels and applying a factor which then gives the annual commitment, the annual training numbers. If you don't meet those numbers, you then incur a fee. The fee is known as pilot, which is payment in lieu of training. In every single situation, training the cadet is more cost effective than paying pilot. And this is where it becomes sensible commercially to train cadets. It's the benefit of this scheme. You get the lower corporation tax rates with the added benefit of it being more cost effective to train those high quality people for your organisation. Avoiding pilot isn't the only reason to train. As I said before, People really are at the heart of our decision-making process. They're at the heart of what Clyde Marine Training do and they're at the heart of our business success. It's why we believe this scheme enables the best possible commercial outcome and training outcome. We started this presentation by speaking about the shortage of officer positions that are current and predicted and we know that the numbers are large but those shortages also translate into challenges in recruiting for shore based positions where that experience is essential. Positions around marine insurance, marine assurance, accident investigation, shipboard operations, um, vetting, maintenance, shipbuilding, the list is endless. Our entire shore based industry is built upon the experience of people that have come from the seagoing aspects, from the seagoing positions. These challenges are quite often exasperated now by a need for very specific specialised training in your type of operation. We know that bulk carriers have very specific requirements for their officers and they only become worse as you move into the tanker sectors and then in the specialised offshore or 
heavy lift sectors. The cadetship provides one very strong way to resolve this. It allows companies to take control of the succession planning, to take control of their manpower pools. The advancing technologies are definitely driving a change towards a higher caliber of trainee, of cadet. We see the academic requirements go up all the time. They range from entry level courses like HNC, but we see the higher end courses such as bachelor's degrees coming through and more and more demand coming online for them. As we move to certain autonomous or remote operations, these challenges will only become more profound. These, this requirement for these experiences, these, this knowledge pool will become greater. The cadetship really is your opportunity to train those people for your fleet, for your future. The seafarers that we need tomorrow will be the pioneers of these changing technologies, be it around the, the remote or autonomous shipping or decarbonisation, the changes in fuels. All of these things come with more in-depth knowledge requirements. And as I say, the cadetship is the opportunity for you to really take control of how you train your people from a very early stage and, and build them up. The way that we achieve that is by adding a number of courses and training requirements to your cadetship. We're able to do that in a cost-effective way. It's done through this scheme. It draws all sources of funding, but it means that you're doing it at the time where the individual is already on a training program. You're not taking them away from your operation. You're not weakening your, your, your seagoing manpower requirements. You're able to train them at a time designated for that very purpose. We can add the short courses around low flashpoint fuels. You can add them around special tanker courses, be it ones that are driven by legislative requirements in STCW or from industry higher standard training requirements, which is what we're always aiming to, to achieve. This really can be solidified and be a particular benefit to your organization when you can take the learning that they've had in those short courses ashore and then put them onto your fleet, your vessels, and really cement that knowledge with practical hands-on experience. And that would be the, the next step of the training. So holistically, it's complete ownership of your training program that meets the industry requirements, the legislative requirements, and your company-specific requirements. Short courses aren't the only area of customization within the cadetship. Companies have the choice of academic qualification. There's a number of routes offered by a number of providers which we can facilitate. They range from HNC now right through to bachelor's degrees. Most academic institutions that we work with are developing in some way or in some form the option for full degrees or bolt-on degrees, parts that they can integrate within the, the cadetship itself to ensure that the cadet leaves with the highest academic qualification. What this allows us to do is actively influence the course content. It's a marginal departure from the cadetship because there's a higher academic standard being produced and this allows us that, that bespoke element. We work very, very closely with those colleges and universities in order to influence what those elements can be. And we take our lead from you, the ship owners, the client companies, in order to then produce something which meets your requirements. This um, obviously meets a, a knowledge requirement. It provides the elements of, of academic knowledge that are required, but the benefits don't actually stop there in these training routes. All of them have a sea time requirement, which can be up to 15 months physically on board your assets. This is critical, not just in solidifying the knowledge, the, the academic elements that have been delivered at colleges and universities, but also to integrate the trainee into your company's culture. They begin to work in a manner which is consistent with your principles, with your convictions. It allows them to build an understanding of your SMS before you have any responsibility, before they have any responsibility on board your ships. It allows them to be trained to a point that when they graduate, when they qualify, they do have that familiarity with your operation, your SMS, your safety culture. These um, less tangible benefits 
but extremely important benefits that the cadetship provides. Within our group, we have seafarers that have started with us as cadet, worked their way through the ranks up to master, chief engineer taking command, and then subsequently transitioned ashore, gone through the management positions, and now ultimately lead our organisation. Myself, I started as a climate Marine Training Cadet. Most of our training officers were climate Marine Training Cadets. All of them have been to sea. And should your organisation wish to take this approach, there is an extra £12,000 of funding available per cadet. Let's talk about that for a minute. Cost and funding. I've mentioned that it's cost effective to train, but it does have a cost. On average, a UK cadet costs around £45,000 to train, which is about £15,000 per year. In the same period, it would cost you around £47,000 in pilot fees if you enrol in the scheme and don't train. And this is actually at the lower end of the pilot rate. So it's instantly more cost effective if you enrol in the scheme to be involved in training. However, there is additional funding available under the SMART scheme or the Support for Maritime Training scheme, as I had mentioned. This is provided by the MCA. With SMART 1 funding, you can receive up to £15,000. This equates to about £5,000 a year over the 150 weeks of training, with an additional bonus of £3,000 for cadets that complete their training. SMART 2 funding for cadets that follow routes that include elements for the next level of COC, their management certification, you can claim a further £4,000 in bonuses. However, if you commit to offering the cadets employment for at least 12 months, as we mentioned earlier, you can then claim a further £12,000 through the Smart Plus scheme. This means your total cost of training for a highly skilled bespoke officer that can go straight into your fleet is now as low as £11,000 over three years compared to £47,000 that you would pay if you pay pilot. There are a lot of stakeholders involved in cadet training. This includes the MCA, the MNTB, the shipping companies, the vessels, the seafarers that are on board your vessels, the cadets, the training providers, us as approved, TPs under the smart funding scheme. It's a huge list and a lot of inputs, a lot of different um, sources of information to get information in from and to put information out to. CMT as a business is designed to, to incorporate all of these things, to work with all of these stakeholders, engage effectively. We have processes and procedures which formulate around a, a core database system that keeps us on track, monitors the cadet's progress through this, through this system, through the scheme, monitors the bespoke elements that you as a client might want in there. Um, we are then able to effectively manage consistently the trainees from recruitment through to qualification and, and actually beyond qualification uh, in a lot of cases. The system as well allows us to effectively be audited to make sure that we're administering the funding and things in, in the right way, uh, which, which is, is a requirement under the SMART scheme. The, the whole purpose of all of this is really that these things centre around the cadet. They centre around the people that are involved in training that cadet. It is, again, going back to it, the, the most important thing. And for that reason, we regularly engage with stakeholders across the board we're always speaking to our clients, we're always speaking to other parts of industry, industry bodies, the colleges that deliver the training, um, the, the, the cadets themselves, which is, is really quite a critical part of our feedback process. But we are very engaged in, in, in that sense. Ultimately, the cadet is our top priority. Their successful completion of the training is our top priority. It all begins with our recruitment process. We've recently overhauled this to focus on a few key attributes. We screen over 1,500 applicants a year and we only select the top 25% of those. Our process focuses on the individual, their resilience and their ability to cope with life at sea and their understanding of what they're about to embark upon. 
We want to understand that their commitment and resolve to complete the training and their aspirations beyond it. We're looking for individuals that understand the challenges and the career and what they want to achieve from it. We follow this up with comprehensive onboarding. During phase one of the training, our TOs, the training officers, meet with the cadets over a number of preparation days designed to acclimatise the cadet as much as possible for what's going to happen in the first C phase. All of our training officers have been to see. They are well placed to support our clients and the cadets with the challenges that are about to come up at any point in the training. We follow this up with comprehensive onboarding during phase one. So the training officers meet with the cadets multiple times throughout the phase with a number of presentations and engaging activities which are all designed to acclimatise the cadet for what's coming, essentially for phase two, the C phase. Most of the cadets come into phase one without much of, an, much of a challenge, many issues. It's relatively straightforward going from secondary school into further education, but the jump from further education to going to C is quite significant. All of the training officers have been to C. This sets them up well to prepare the cadets for what they're about to embark upon. They can answer questions and provide the right levels of support for both the client and the cadet. They're essentially there to, to provide that. We continuously review the documentation that's provided on the cadet's performance throughout all of these phases. So as the college phase gets underway, there's reports coming in from the college, from the cadet. We monitor that, we provide feedback to the cadets. But then as we get into the C phase as well, we're engaging with the companies, we're receiving the feedback from the vessels, from the company's management, and again from the trainee continuously reviewing and, and, and essentially mentoring, developing the cadet throughout the programme. We work with all of the maritime universities and colleges in the UK. We are able to come up with action plans, provide one-to-one -one sessions with the trainees in, in order to manage that development, that progression of your future officer. The company, CMT, are also members of the relevant technical committees, industry boards, IAMI, the MNTB, etc. And that again enables us to be right at the forefront of cadet training, making sure that any changes that are coming through in the schemes are reviewed by us on your behalf, we have input to them on your behalf, and that ultimately we know they're going to work for the cadets. When it comes to the training of your cadets, we're well placed to ensure that this meets the highest possible standards. Our sister company, Clyde Training Solutions, delivers a broad range of courses and boasts an instructor base that are qualified up to a TQFE level. This allows us to ensure that the cadets are receiving a good balance of academic delivery with those formal TQFE qualifications, combined with a strong practical course delivery and the short course instructors. The, being at the forefront, the ability to deliver training as well as be a training provider ensures that we keep current with the latest changes in industry. Aside from our own internal delivery, we're also an end user of our own service. We train cadets for future officers for our fleet. We ultimately, through our sister companies, our ship owning side, our ship management side, have a need to fulfil this same pipeline that we provide the service for. This again lets us know what works in industry, what doesn't work in industry and how we need to influence the changes for the future. During the cadetship, particularly the college phases, CMT will coordinate all of the travel that's required to get the cadets to and from college, to medical appointments, visa appointments, to meet any specific company requirements that you have around flag state documentation, immunizations, or, or anything that's required uh, specific to your operation. Being part of a, a broader group with the ship management aspect, we're also acutely aware of the challenges that there can be in coordinating the travel and the logistics for cadets around the globe to meet your assets during crew changes. In order to alleviate the pressure on your existing operations, we're able to provide an additional service which will coordinate the movement of your cadets on your behalf. We'd work hand in hand with your crewing teams or with your manning teams to ensure that, that this happens 
when crew changes are taking place for your vessels, but we can provide all of the logistics, including liaising with the agent and providing the actual flights. We do that in partnership with our, our own in-house travel provider, Clyde Travel. They are a, a marine travel provider and we're able to work very, very effectively with them to make sure that we get the best possible price for those, those travel arrangements. We then pass them back to you at cost. There's no, no additional fee for that. The cadetship's only the first three years of the trainee's career. It's actually at this point, at the end of this three years, that you'll begin to see the first return on your investment. The cadets themselves will qualify with their Officer of the Watch certificates and the relevant disciplines, be it DEC, Engine or ETO, but they'll also have all of the short course training that's been required for your specific operation. They'll be ready to join your assets. By this time, They'll also already have spent several months on board your vessels. They'll understand your company's culture, your SMS, your working practices. They'll be ready, essentially, to take up employment on board your vessels. But the benefits don't end there. Some of you watching this presentation may have been cadets. Cadets fuel the future leaders of our industry. Some of them are masters and chief engineers still on board. Some of them are running nautical colleges. Some work for the regulator, for industry bodies, for consultancy, insurance, chartering, brokering. Cadets scale the breadth of our industry, and it's an industry that needs those competencies more than ever. Ultimately, we're not speaking about providing a cadetship, we're speaking about providing a career. We all know the statistics. 90% of everything moves by ship. Global shipping is global trade, and we rely on our people both ashore and on board more than ever. The pandemic has really highlighted the challenges that the seafarers face, but it also has highlighted the reliance that we have of them to keep global trade moving. It highlights the shortages and the, the exposure that we have when we don't have enough people. The cadet training programme is your own insurance policy. It's your own way to ensure that you are self-sufficient when it comes to training people for your organisation's future needs. It takes people that are young and that are ready to adapt to your organisation, be part of it, that want to grow with it, and brings them through to be ultimately those leaders of your industry, of your company in the future. The tonnage tax scheme essentially enables you to do this in a commercially sensitive, cost-effective manner. Your future is your people. It's our job to make them competent beyond compliance. Thanks very much.